Hey, real quick, that was awesome. Ken Korak uh, with his uh, A's update, shouting out fans from Sacktown Sports. He's a tremendous guy, and I, I didn't know he'd done that. That's that's wonderful. That's, that was, I know this is very emotional for Ken. Looking forward to having him up here, but thank you, Ken Korak. Now, we have a special guest, Drapes. I know it's your buddy. Yes, yeah, my guy, Tom E. Curran of NBC Sports Boston, Patriots uh, analyst, insider, writer. Uh, I'm looking at his uh, Twitter bio right now. He has Patriots insider, NBC Sports Boston, I putt one-handed. Hold up, Tom. I don't remember that big fella. Explain that. One-handed putter? Confirmed. One-handed putter. Uh, you know, the left hand gets too involved. It turns over. The next thing I know, I'm pulling everything. <laughs> I make everything one hand. The speed control drapes is what's uncanny. I don't know why. Even wow. if it's a 25-foot putt, 30-foot putt, 40-foot putt, we're still going to one-hand them. Strong hand or weak hand? Which one are you using? It's the right. I'm going right hand for a right handed player. I know you're oh. a big, the big left. Yeah, the big lefty. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what's silly. <laughs> I, I, might, I might try that, Tom. I, maybe that'll help my golf game, man. You never know. You never know, kid. Yeah. Like everything. Good, man. You miss me out there? Let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. You miss me out there? Everybody misses you. They, they said, hey, we got to do some Celtic stuff tonight on early edition. Like who is the biggest impediment to the Celtics winning another title? I'm like, I, 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 I'm I'm up to my eyeballs in NFL. I don't know. <laughs> We're going. Well, looks like the Knicks have the entire Villanova team together. Let's go with Knicks. Dude, you you got to do phone a friend or something like that next time they ask you. You know, exactly. uh, put them on hold and call me up. So, hey Tom, I got a question for you. I know you uh, you pe- uh, posted, pardon me, a plea for patience regarding the Patriots re- rebuild to fans this week. I think I know the answer, but how well received was that? How impatient are Patriot fans right now? Well, it's they're not over the top impatient right now, but but I think what they're impatient for is Drake May. They want Drake May out there. They want the fact that the Patriots played so well against the Cincinnati Bengals in week one to be repetitive repetitive. They mm-hmm. want to see it over and over again. And as you guys know, having been out there and Drake's having covered innumerable professional teams. The worse a team is, the more its performances are going to fluctuate. Some nights, the other team's going to take them not that serious, or there's going to be a matchup, or there's going to be injuries. And that team that really isn't that talented will put it all together, and everything falls their way, and they have a great performance. That happened against Cincy. The second week, Patriots made two mistakes against the Seahawks, and it was enough for Geno Smith to say, yep, I got this takes care of business against them. They're one and one. And then Gino Smith, excuse me, uh, Aaron Rodgers gets in against them after watching Gino and goes, huh, if Gino can do that, watch this <laughs> and kill them. So it's fascinating to see them this week going up against a, uh, a Niners team that will have their, you know, have its full attention yeah. applied to the Patriots, given the fact that the Niners are one and two in the way they lost last week. Hey, Tom, you know, uh, both of uh, you and I, we, we know Gerard Mayo pretty well. Great guy. Uh, what do you think of the, about the job he's doing so far and the patience that Robert Kraft will have with him? I think he'll have a lot of patience. Um, the job he's doing so far has been impressive in these ways, Trips. He is trying to change the culture in terms of making it a little less oppressive a little less negative, Mm, yeah. but he is not in any way making it less difficult. He ran practices that were longer than bills that hit more than bills. Um, that tackled to the ground more frequently than bill Belichick's. And he is much more apt to at the podium say like, to Ramondre Stevenson the other day. Yeah. He stumbled three times in three games. We can't have that because every team is going to be going after it now. So he's going to have to work on that. And Bill would never say anything like that. So it's interesting to see this kind of radical transparency from Mayo in that regard. What I talked to Matt Mayoko earlier today um, for my pod from NBC Sports Bay Area. And what he emphasized was how long it will take for the personnel to jive as they put this West Coast offense in the same way it had to with San Francisco. You really have to implement a program and allow the offensive coordinator to keep putting the players in um, 
that he thinks will fit his system. And, and the Patriots are going to have to show patience with that. Otherwise, they're going to get halfway down the road, put in this West Coast offense in, and then say, oh, you know what? We don't want to do this anymore. It's not working. So they have to commit. We're catching up with Tommy Curran from NBC Sports Boston. Since you mentioned Coach Belichick, Tom, um, you know, now there's a lot of people just speculating that, oh, maybe Jacksonville, maybe they will hire Bill Belichick. There's been talk of maybe Dallas uh, has been uh, thinking about him or maybe Philly if things go wrong with Coach Sirianni. How likely do you think Coach Belichick is to even come back at all to any team in the NFL this year? Well, I think he's done a good job rehabilitating his image and getting some separation from the fact that it's a four and 13 team that he had here in new England, his decisions helped to ruin a first round quarterback who should not have been ruined that quickly. His drafting was horrendous. The free agent signings were terrible and the culture was bad. Not to mention the spending wasn't good. They spent $172 million in guaranteed money in 2021. And by 2023, they were a four and 13 team. So he was not, Firing on all cylinders, to say the least, <laughs> for the five years here. But I think he's done a nice job of putting a buff and shine on his reputation because everyone genuflects when he comes on with them. And everyone's like, they've already forgotten how bad it was here. Hmm. So I think that he has done a good job at least trying to convince a league that turned its back on him entirely this past last season. Nobody wanted the guy. Hmm. He's 72. He's fairly fixed in his ways. He's going to want to do things his way when he comes in. He's going to want $20 million a year, most likely. I mean, he was making, approaching that. Maybe he'll take less because he's got enough money. But he's not an easy hire, nor an easy guy to get along with. So what he has to do is make himself much more cuddly. And I think he's doing an effective job of that. But I look at places like Jacksonville, for instance, and I thought positive that, oh, maybe Bill will be interested about that in that because Shad Khan. When you read the fine print after having covered a guy like Bill, do you think Bill wants to go across the pond to Europe every year and even be conceivably a team that splits its home games in England, which the Jaguars have been mm. you know, rumored to be? And that might be way down the road and Bill would be long gone. But it's not going to be a deep-pocketed owner. It's He's not going to get hired mid-season because he would bring in all his coaches. He's not going to go there and work with Doug Peterson's coaches. So I don't think Bill is the kind of guy who would take over a job um, midstream. There might be an interim. There's usually an interim. You never see teams hire uh, a coach of Bill's gravitas in the middle of the season. They'll let somebody finish out wherever it is, whoever loses a job, sadly. And then Bill would be courted in the offseason, I think. Hey, Tom, when you look at this week's matchup, what's the uh, one area that the Patriots feel like they may have an advantage or can exploit when it comes to Sam? When you look at what the Niners do, what's the best case scenario for this Patriots team? Best case scenario, just, just the only scenario is they just don't turn the ball over. Having mentioned already that Ramondre Stevenson has as many fumbles as he does, mm. you know, but Jacoby Brissett takes care of the ball. He has taken a battering through the first three weeks, but he has not thrown an, an interception. Now the Jets went after Brissett. Their head coach is Robert Sala. You're going to see the Niners employ probably same pre the same kinds of pressures until the Patriots prove they can stop them. So there there are very few pathways for the Patriots to win other than the normal ones that we talk about. Be effective on third down, mm -hmm. win the turnover battle, you know, those kinds of things. But to just line up and say they're going to win a 31 to 28 game that goes up and down the field, it's, it's not going to happen that way. They just don't have the talent. Tommy Curran from NBC Sports Boston joining us here as we get ready for the 49ers and the Patriots. Tom, I know you're focused, obviously, on the Patriots, but what is your view of what's uh, from afar of what's going on with the 49ers right now? They're going to get it. Fixed. It's interesting to see how talented they are. When you look at even with the injuries, you still have guys like, you know, Fred Warner. You still have offensively. They plug in who's the running back? Juwan Jennings. Uh, that's the receiver, Juwan Jennings. Okay. And Jordan it's Mason. JP like, Mason. Yeah. He had like 15 catches the other day. Jennings did. Yes. Something ridiculous. Yes. So, and then Kittle will come back, and Debo will come back, and. You know, at some point, McCaffrey will come back and they'll be loaded. I just think that the thing about the Niners is they're a program. And it takes a while to have a program in the NFL 
that has the kind of continuity that, you know, for instance, the Patriots had. The Ravens have a program. The Niners have a program. The Bills have developed a program. Um, and that takes time. Like even Dallas, they're there as long as they are, but you really couldn't call that an effective program. Hmm. They don't yield good results. The other, these other ones do. Kansas City, obviously, a program that's centered around one elite coach, elite concept, elite player. Um, and I think, you know, with the Niners, they're fortunate enough to be centered around the elite concept. And, and I do believe coach and set up there. And there's a lot of buy in on that team. And then there's just excellent players, too, to round it out. And I think that. You know, Matt Mayoko saying this, and I'm babbling here, sorry. But Matt Mayoko saying this to me about how you, John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan had the latitude to pick their players. Look what a great job they did, whether it was adding Juszczyk or having Kittle or taking a chance on Debo or making sure you re-signed Ayuk or swinging a deal to get McCaffrey when, you know, Carolina was, you know, trying to shop him. Just, just. You can swing and miss on the number two pick and still develop a guy in your program yeah. <laughs> in Brock Purdy who performs that way. Uh-huh. You think Brock Purdy would be doing this in Jacksonville? No. And that's not a slight to Brock Purdy. It's just when you're in the right spot, you can have great success. Sam Darnold, perfect example. Okay. Well, Tom, we appreciate it. Uh, a lot of people around here are saying this looks like a must-win game for the 49ers, uh, the things have been, uh, you know, not going their way lately. And uh, for the Patriots, they're just trying to keep that rebuild on track, right? Is that a fair summation of where we are right now? Yeah, keep the rebuild on track. Don't have a repeat performance of what we saw last Thursday night when they were completely uncompetitive. So I don't think they're walking out and getting on the plane and saying, we're going to go hand the 49ers their very own ass. They're probably just saying, okay, let's just try and be effective this week effective so just, is, yeah, right <laughs> look like an nfl niners, team right the niners cannot be losing this game <laughs> oh my gosh uh-oh jay can we clip that because come monday if the, if the if the patriots shock the world we got to play that again they can't lose this game can they they cannot be losing a game like this no 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 no, no. Can't all right all tom right. great stuff man thanks for the golf tips too we appreciate it all right, great to hear from you. Always swing as hard as you can. That's my theory this year. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. <laughs> What's your handicap, Tom? 20? I got, I got down to 8.2. Oh, Whoa. okay. Always swing as hard as you can. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try that. I'm golfing tomorrow. I'm going to try that. Thank you, Tom. All right, All right Tommy. Great. All right, man. See you guys. Appreciate right. it. Uh, we have this note. Thank you, Kyle Draper, for uh, sharing this from Nick Wagner. Trent Williams. Won't practice today, but he's ill. So he just he's ill, right? Yeah. Well, he's having a hard time playing all these games now. All right, he, he's gas, man. Hold out, yeah, exactly. So mm-hmm. Trent's uh, out today, no practice. Mm-hmm. Man, uh, when we come back, nil chaos rears its ugly head next on Sackdown Sports. Who's ready for some fun on Saturday?